Good morning, everybody. Good morning. God, I love this country. You know, this country we could be anything we want to be. We could be a doctor. We could be a ball player, except Chris. But um, <laughs> um, but but you know what I love most is, is is the liberty that we have from Jesus to do it. Amen. I mean, we said we said the pledge of allegiance, and it said um, um, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. That liberty comes from Jesus Christ in our lives. Now I'm going to share, my name is Freddie Guzman, for those who do not know me. I've been in the military for almost 13 years now. And um, I served my country as a non-Christian, and that was easy. But serving my country as a Christian has been very difficult. Because um, the challenges that, that we face, and um, I know the past preachings that have, that the pastor has talked about, I remember Tori spoke about being bold. That's something that we need to do as soldiers, especially when we're saved. And um, I, passed, I mean, one thing I want to share with too is that um, I'm not very, I'm not a person that gets surprised very much. I'm always on my toes. I'm always alert. But Pastor Bill is real good <laughs> to bring you up here without you even knowing. So he asked me to come up here and give a testimony of uh, the challenges I've had um, as a Christian in the military. I shared one with the men at a men's breakfast once. I'm gonna share one that um, I've had uh, like two months ago. We had a, a change of command, which that means is a, the commander that's in charge of our unit had to leave and the new one had to come in. So they had to do a, a ceremony. And you have colonels there, you have generals, you have the media and everything. But before any change of command starts, you have a chaplain that has to speak. The chaplain did not show up that day. So the commander asked me if I could give the invocation. And I said, sure, you have something for me to say because for those who not know, chaplains pretty much have something written down for them to say. So I really don't put my faith too much on chaplains. <laughs> but um, they already know what they're gonna say because it's so pre-written for them by the commander, by the generals, by the colonels. The commander, she told me, I'm sorry, I don't have anything. Say what's ever in your heart. I said, you sure? She said, okay. Now, I know what was in my heart to say, because if those who not know, do not know, when um, in the military, when you say an invocation, you can't say the name of Jesus. You can say in God's name so that you don't offend anyone, but you cannot say the name of Jesus. So I was a little bit struggling inside my heart because, one, I had colonels there, I had generals there. I'm up for promotion. <laughs> so so that, that was something that I was really struggling with because I said, okay, what do I do? I went to the bathroom and I said, Lord, I know what I have to do. But I, this is hard. I got 150, 200 soldiers in front of me. I got generals on the left hand side. I got my commander in front of me. What do I do? So the Lord brought the scripture to my mind that said uh, in Matthew 10, said, you know, whoever acknowledged me in front of men, I will acknowledge you in front of my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me in front of men, I will deny you in front of my Father who is in heaven. And that was awesome. But did it make it easy? No. I was, I was still scared. I said, Lord, okay, I know what you want me to do, but I... I got to go up there. I got to do it. So I, I, I got on my knees in that bathroom and they were waiting for me and I was praying. I said, Lord, what do I do? What do I do? And, you know, God, God gave me the strength. You know, God gave me the strength to, to um, step up front in front of so many soldiers and do a blessing for the commander, for the new commander, for the troops, and end my prayer with, in Jesus' name. Wow, that was like when they scratch a record. I don't know, nobody uses records anymore, but when they scratch... <laughs> Exactly. Every eye from the left side of that stage was looking at me. The colonels, the generals, everybody were looking at me like, he did not just say that. He, he, he's, he's going against the army code. He's going, well, I, I was. I was going against um, orders. I was going against, but I, I, I understood and I have understand throughout my Christian life that God is the one that gives my promotion. God is the one that takes care of me. He's the one that took care of me overseas when a lot of soldiers turn their back on me. He's the one that took care of me at all times and he's the one that will, I have to lift his name up Amen. at all times. You know, some, um, we, we say too that we walk by faith and not by sight. And we usually take that scripture and apply for a job we're gonna take, for, for a school we wanna go to, for any, something material that we want. But so we have to walk by faith just to honor his name. We have to step out just like Peter. Peter walked out into the waters. What did he get in return? Did he get anything material in return? He, he just walked out so that if he did not do that, we would have not learned that. We, have not, we wouldn't be reading it in, our, in the scriptures, in the Bible. That was for us to know that Jesus is real. 
that his name will be glorified at all times. And I had to do that. I didn't get anything reward. They, they pounded me afterwards. They told me that you did not just say that. And they took me to the side. They said, you know you cannot say that. You knew you cannot say that. You've been in the, military, in the military long enough to know that you cannot say that. I said, I know that, but you told me it was speaks in my heart. You know, and, and I have to tell you something from the abundance of my heart, the mouth speaks. So I told him, I told the commander, you told me to speak what's in my heart, and my, Jesus is in my heart. And she just looked at me, she said, she just nodded her head and she just walked away. And then she's like, so the, the only, I guess, bad thing about it, they didn't let me give the final prayer at the end of the, <laughs> of the, of the ceremony. But um, it, there was a lot of people there that, that knew I was a Christian. There was a lot of people that that knew because of the fact that I would go into drill weekend, you know, listening to Christian music, doing things that I do, not participating in things that a lot of soldiers participate in, that I used to participate with them. And they asked me, sorry, you don't, you don't do the things you used to do with us anymore. And I'm sorry, I don't. But I needed to stand up in front of these people and do what the right thing is. Right. Now, did I get anything in return physically? No, probably my promotion is gonna be extended for another year. <laughs> but hey, at the end, when I, when I die, when I go to heaven, this uniform, these medals, it's not going to mean anything. All that's going to matter is what God thinks of me. So I don't, and, and just to add a little bit, when I was overseas, um, the, the, talking about the freedom that we have in this country, you could get up every morning in this, in this country, step out your door with the Bible and nobody can say anything. Now I've experienced overseas that there's a lot of people that are Christians and they have a certain time that they can only and it's usually nighttime that they go and they worship because of the fact, especially in Afghanistan, especially because of the fact that Islam is, is the religion there and Christianity is it's not accepted. I know John spoke a little bit about my testimony one time he preached about me giving a hat to a, that says I love Jesus to a, a child, an 11 year old child. Caused a big gunfight. <laughs> yeah. Caused me to get in trouble. I mean, it wasn't a happy ending. The kid came back two weeks later and stabbed one of our soldiers. So, kid ended up dying. But the fact is that we live in a country that we could do these things. We live in a country that we could be free to, to praise God, to worship God. So I, I pre pretty much have no sympathy for people that don't do it. Because I've, lived, I've been in a country that people that can do it, still do it. So I, I'm not here to encourage you to step out in boldness. I'm here to challenge you. Step out in boldness in school you know, in your workplace, you know, anywhere you're at, to, to acknowledge Jesus, to, to, to show Him that He is your Lord and Savior. So, I, like I said, I, I, I challenge you to step out in boldness and, and praise the name of Jesus, because even though it, it's challenging, like I said, when I was standing there, I, I didn't want, I didn't really, my, 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 my mind didn't want to do it. I didn't want to stand up in front of them and give a prayer and say in the name of Jesus, or talk about what was in my heart for God, but it's something that we're called for to do as, as Christians. You know, it's something that we, that we really are called for to do, and, and sometimes we slack. We slack because we say, you know, we'll wait, you know, we believe church is gonna be there every day. And the thing is, to finish, the more we challenge ourselves to do that, I'm not saying the easier it's gonna be when the time the Lord comes back, but Matthew 24 says that because of the increase of wickedness in the world, it says the hearts of many will grow cold, but those who stand firm will be saved. Now, if we cannot do it in school, in our workplace, to stand firm and bold for God, how are we going to do it when times get harder? When we can't walk out the door with our Bible because there's going to be so much more persecution. Now, the times in this world are not going to get better, but we're supposed to stand firm. Love God, stand firm, like John preached about last Sunday, when those waves come, we're standing there firm, you know, in God, no matter what anybody says. No matter if it causes us, us our jobs, our promotion. And I know it's easier said than done, but I have experienced that a little bit. I, I, I've been in the military like 13 years. I should be two ranks higher. My wife sometimes tells me, I don't know why you're still in, with all the challenges they go through. But it's, it's God, you know. I want to make it to, my, my goal is to become a rank so high that I could influence God into younger soldiers. So that, I'm not saying the military is going to change completely, but I want to influence soldiers that they don't have to be in the statistics that just because you're in the military, you have to go overseas and sleep around. Just because you're in the military, you have to drink all you want to drink. Just because you're in the military, you, you know, that you have that freedom. No, we have the freedom to be different. We have the freedom. We have choices. We, we can make a choice. Amen? And um, so, now I'm really going to finish. 
And I just want to thank everybody, for, uh, John and Pastor Bill, for allowing me to be here. And also to, um, I want to thank my family, my wife and my children, because as a soldier, somebody has to hold down the fort at home every time I'm gone. And they have to deal with me, with the attitude changes, switching that switch from a soldier, so strict, coming home to be a passive parent or a passive husband, and not so strict on things. And um, they also wear this uniform, not just me. And um, I also want to say happy birthday to my baby. She's 16 today. And um, amen. Thank you.